Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this inbox review of Taycom's M3 Lee Early. So this is the first kit from Taycom I've ever taken a look at. So I'm very curious to see the quality of molding and detail we get from this manufacturer. They've already released some very notable kits like their uh, Tiger or King Tiger series with full interiors, which is something I really like to get my hands on. And I also believe they are releasing a Panther series, again with full interior, I believe it's going to be Panther A's, including a Burger Panther, which is something that most of us will be looking for many, many years. So again, this company seems to be on the up and up, building subjects that people have been after. And also they build different um, kind of wildcard subjects, that tanks and machines that people don't often think they'll ever see in plastic. So Taycom are a good like manufacturer for this. And when I saw that they were releasing M3 Lees, I was really excited because obviously if you're into the Sherman, well the M3 Lee is very important in the evolution of the M4 Sherman um, as a machine. In many regards it's just like the, the granddad or the parent vehicle that the M3 was born out of. And uh, I thought it was about time I added one to my collection. In this case it's going to be the M3 Lee. This is the American version of this vehicle. There was also an export version of the M3 which was designated the M3 Grant. I was given that designation as that was the British contract version of this vehicle. Only difference is this machine gun turret has been omitted and the turret has been slightly elongated to fit a radio set. Very, very little difference between the machines. In fact, you can also build M3 Lees for the British Army too, as they did receive about 30 of them, if I recall correctly, very early in the Desert War as they were so desperate for machines. So you can technically build a M3 Lee in British service. So that's kind of cool if you want to try something different. So first things first, let's have a look at the box. A really attractive box art here of a Russian or Soviet land lease M3 here. So really nice. One thing that actually kind of caught me off guard is this box is quite small. However, it is very deep. So it's a nice way of saving space. You now often we build boxes a bit too big. On the sides of the box, we have a big Taycom logo, as well as two profiles. We have a profile of a Soviet Union, unknown unit, unknown date. So again, it's very vague, but that's probably a good thing. You can use it for different um, different settings. I believe these were used right up until Kursk, if I, if I recall correctly. And then we have a non unknown training unit, Desert Warfare Cent Center, USA, 1942. As you can see, the color callouts and profiles are in or provided and the color callouts will be of ammo of make so again you're gonna to have to go looking for alternative colors if you don't use ammo of make which i do not on the other side which is kind of cool we actually have our sprue our sprue map on the side of the box that's kind of class it's very clever so again not too many sprues in the box and we're going to see that it's not too busy of a build we also have some um advertising for their typhoon k which if i remember correctly is a soviet or russian a modern Russian armoured vehicle, like a, an APC, a mine protected APC, if, I'm, if I recall correctly. And we also have the M3 Grant, which is the British version of the Lee. So when you crack open the box, we're greeted with individually bagged parts. And these are sticky taped or um, adhesively sealed, so there's no staples if you're worried about parts getting damaged. And as you can see, there's only a few screws in this box, so uh, this should be a pretty quick build if it is in fact an easy kit to put together. Um, from what I've understood from reading online of this kit, it can be a little bit tricky. It does require a bit of attention to detail when fitting parts as, as we'll have a look in the instructions. It is a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle to put together. So with that said, let's actually have a look at the instructions. So starting with the instructions, everything is pre-bagged including the instructions, which is a nice little touch. So let's have a look see. So we get our water side um, decals, which are included in a Ziploc bag. That's a nice touch, especially if you're a modeler like me that has their workshop out in the shed. I really want to keep these away from the damp. So having a resealable bag is very handy. We have a loose, clear uh, sprue here. Again, just for our headlights. We have a small photo wedge fret. And then we have this really attractive looking booklet. So again, it's printed in black paper. We have like a technical drawing of the uh, M3 Lee here, as well as a little bit of history 
and this really nice side profile. This is a really nice looking instruction sheet. Really small as well, actually, which is sometimes it's not a bad thing. Because um, often you might find that instruction booklets are so big that you often will find it difficult to find a good spot to put them onto your work desk, desk when you have a full of tools and sprues. So this shouldn't get in the way. So let's have a proper look and see what we get. So first thing we're greeted with are our colour um, profiles. Again, these are done by MIG or Ambo MIG and we have our Russian and US early war machines. Again, it's in glossy paper so the light's reflecting. These are quite nice. Then we have our legend. Various different um, icons, how to apply decals, how to remove photo etch. Some nice little introductions for the beginner modeler. Then we have a really nice and neatly laid out sprue map. And again, all of the sprues are lettered and numbered quite clearly. So, and they actually number the way they are in the actual kit, so that's handy. And then coming on to step one, just like um, its M4 counterpart, we'll, we're going to begin with the lower hull like we do in all tanks. Here we have our lower hull tub. Again, it's very reminiscent of Sherman because more or less the lower hull tub from M3 more or less was used with the M4 series as well. We have our transmission covers and differentials, final drives track tensioners now i do understand with the tracks which we're going to get to in a few moments do have some issues to do with the tension of the tracks apparently the the track tension is about a link and a half too long for this for this machine so you might have to cut away the tensioning arms and reposition them a couple of degrees to, um, to to basically tighten the track it's a little bit unfortunate but um that's the only way i can come up to get around it Step two, we're moving on to our buggy assemblies. These are somewhat reminiscent of Asuka Models uh, Fifi SS um, suspension buggies. We do have multi-part, uh, we do have multi-part wheel assemblies here, which is kind of unusual. Let's see how well they go together when we get to the, the actual kit. Moving on to step three, we have our Lincoln length tracks. So the actual kit does not come with individual uh, tracks or rubber band. We actually get Lincoln length as well as a template here to help us um, align the parts correctly. Like I was saying, I do believe they gave us a link and a half too much track. And because that they're Lincoln length, they kind of lock us in. So um, you might have to reposition the track tensioners to try to account for this. That might be the only way around it. Now we start moving on step five, and this is going to be the... So now we're moving on to step five, and this is going to be adding the hull parts, or the first parts of the hull, to the upper and lower hull. So we have that the hull sides are separate pla plates, the fenders are separate plates. So again, we're gonna see that this is gonna be a bit of a jigsaw of a kit to put together but hopefully it won't be too bad. Now we're moving on to step six. Again, more hull parts. We are adding the, the hull access um, hatches here, as well as the radiator assemblies or the um, exhaust assemblies. We do have detail in the inner faces of these access hatches, which is nice. Again, there's no interior supplied in this kit, and I don't believe or at least I haven't read any press that there's any interior plan for this kit, which is really unusual. Um, after they've, they've done full interiors of their King Tigers, that the uh, M3 series really would have done well for an interior, or at least a partial interior with these large hatches here. Again, Academy's ones do have interior kits, so if you do want to have a full interior, you could uh, just use the Academy kit. I'm not sure how well detailed or how accurate the, uh, the dimensions of the Academy kit is, but at least it's an option. Again, on to step seven, we're adding uh, more plates again. So you can see everything is like plate by plate by plate. And if we're not careful, I can see misalignments and filling work have to be done. And from what I've read from people who've built these already, uh, if you're not careful, you will spend a lot of time filling. And there's a lot of rivet detail that you could accidentally sand or cut away if you're not careful 
uh, doing your filling work. So again, attention to part alignment should uh, save you a lot of a lot of bother. Now we're moving to the superstructures uh, roof. Again, we have a separate crew hatch here as well as the reinforcing bars. Step nine. Again, we have the the hull seventy five short barrel gun. So the M trees when they did come into service, and I. My, my, my knowledge of M3 is not as well, as good as it is of M4, but I've been reading Richard Honeycutt's book of the M history of the M4, and there is actually an extensive chapter or uh, chapters on the development of M3 because it is quite important in the overall story of M4. And uh, from what I can understand, the very early production of M3 actually came with a very long 75mm gun. I believe it was like an anti-aircraft gun or a French anti-aircraft gun before they could get their hands on these shorter barrel ones. And you will see some of the aftermarket barrel sets actually do come come with the longer barrel 75. Both are accurate, but the uh, the long barrel 75s were very early in America's involvement in the fighting in North Africa. Moving on to step 10, we're adding our rotor shield again for our hull gun here. And then we're actually adding our our gun assembly and roof assembly to the hull. Now we're moving on to the engine deck on step 12. So it does ask us to drill some details here. So that's going to be interesting. Again, nothing uncommon. Both Tamiya and Dragon ask us very similar things. Then we're adding our engine deck to our hull assembly here. We do have a small bit of photo etch. We have a plastic tow cable. We have our air filters again for the engine. But what I really like about these instructions so far is they're crystal clear. They are not too busy. And there's not many part like uh, steps in each or there's not so many parts in each step. That that is wonderful. Especially for a booklet so small as this. So you're not going to get confused that easily, which is really good. Again, we're adding our engine access hatches. And I it would appear that this is a blank plate here. We'll have to have a look at the plastic. Um because if they don't have this cut out and you want to put an engine you have to cut into the hull, it'd be very strange if this is actually a solid piece of plastic, like a blank, they just put the detail over. Again, uh, we'll have a look at that when we get to the plastic. We're adding our, our retaining bolts again for the differential cover. These are the early part um, three piece differential covers. Very early Shermans as well had these. Again, some more details, sirens, headlights, and then we're moving on to step 17, our brush guards. So we have photo etch um, brush guards, but it does come with a template to help us bend those to the correct shape. Because if anyone has done Sherman's in the past, trying to bend photo etch um, brush guards is an absolute pain in the arse. Then we're moving on to the final details, by the looks of it. So we have step 18, this is the the rotor um, for the gun elevation, then the small 30 caliber uh, commander's cupola or machine gun cupola. All these different turrets more or less made the M3 basically stand about 13 feet off the ground, making it a massive target. But for a very brief period, funny enough, in North Africa, these tanks were the best tanks in the field for a couple of weeks until more of the Panzer IV specials with the long barrel 75s arrived and then this tank's height began to play against it especially against concealed pack 40s pack 38s and of course the 88s would it be the pack 18 or flak 18 or flak 36 um, very dangerous weapons and because obviously you're in a wide open space in the desert having a vehicle that has a 13 foot silhouette is not necessarily a good thing so these turrets didn't really help and the Brits didn't actually really want these either so they had these omitted for their uh, um, M3 grants that they ordered off the Americans. So in all it's only 19 steps in 12 pages it's not actually a very busy build but again this multi-part assembly for the hull different plates coming together might prove troublesome so again we're going to have to take our time when building this kit or it's going to lead us on a merry goose chase. On a merry chase, and we don't want that. We also have another, again, sorry, it's a bit glossy. We have some more calling, uh, color callouts here. And these are US vehicles from the Desert Training Program 
1942 again unknown units but you do have options here uh, for myself i'm going to be painting this up as a vehicle that took part in the fighting in tunisia and i'm actually be doing some uh, mud camouflage on my vehicle some cool kind of tiger stripey stuff that i've seen photographs of these things having so that's going to be uh, my machine whenever I get around to entering my uh, M3 Armored Spearhead group build on Facebook. Again, I'll have a link in the description to that if you guys want to join. So these are manufactured by Taycon themselves. We have some Soviet stars, some um, US Army stars. The decals are kind of thick. I can actually feel them on my fingertips when I run them over. So again, some setting solution will probably be needed. We have some very early war um u.s army stars these red stars with the yellow or with the uh the blue centers they're very early the blue uh centers unless if they're meant to be are off centered somewhat so i i don't know if there's a little bit of a misalignment there on the register so that's the decals i have no idea how these are to behave so maybe do a bit of research before you uh start cutting them out so you know what to expect. We also have a very, very small photo etch fret. We have our two brush guards for the headlights and we have our exhaust grill for the engine shroud. Not too much going on here, but doesn't again, doesn't need to be. So you should add some nice details. And then finally, we have these very, very small headlights, just kind of haphazardly thrown in. So I'm actually gonna put them into the bag with the photo etch part so I don't lose them. So moving on to the plastic, we're gonna start as always with the lower hull tub. We do have a fully detailed underside here. It's very nice. Again, we have our drainage plugs, different reinforcing ribs, as well as the engine access panel if you have to take something out of the fuel sump, I believe. We have a very basically detailed sponson, but these, the sponsons are included. And the rivet detail is really nice as you can see here you're not going to see any of this but it's still very nice that they included it then we come to our main turret so we do let's pull this in here so we do have some nice cast texturing here it's actually probably some of the nicest cast texturing i've seen in plastic in a while when it comes to doing uh, us cast um, turrets. We do have some foundry markings. I don't know how well you guys can see. I'm gonna make them out. So that's really nice detail. Let me move on to East Brew. This is one of our larger sprues. So here we have a little bit of everything. We have some tools uh, up here. They're nice, really crisp. These molds are very new and they, you can tell. We have the retaining bolts here for our uh, differential cover. We have this large jig here, and this is actually for doing our Lincoln Lent tracks. It helps us just align things and get things uh, in order. Then we have, I think this is our driver's, um, our driver's direct vision port. Again, this front piece here, which is the um, traverse housing for the whole 75 mil gun, actually has some nice uh, cast texturing on that too. I don't know how well it comes up on camera, but it is there. I'll probably add a bit more to it because um, it is a little bit subtle. There is no cast texture whatsoever on the differential cover here, which there should be, but here, here nor there. We have one of our hull side pieces here. Again, really nice rivet detail. It's very, very fine. But again, it's just so many different plates and we have to be very careful to get these to align correctly. We have, I believe this is the front plate of the lower glaces. These are the, so the early M3s had a twin fixed mounted M1919 30 cal machine guns. The whole idea was that the driver could fire um, twin machine guns at wherever the tank was pointed at. It was a complete waste of time and very quickly they realized this is just extra weight and but basically bullshit so they actually omitted the guns and then welded the two plugs for the machine gun or the two ports for the machine guns shut and that's how they are depicted here so the machine gun plugs or ports have been plugged that's the term i was looking for and that's not confusing at all this appears to be a part of the 75 mil hull gun 
it is one piece slide mold again details really nice again check out the rivets on this reinforcing rib here this is probably for the turret roof and the same as the bolt detail here on the end caps for the differentials are really nicely done this is a really finely detailed kit so far and again everything is individually bagged with these lovely adhesively sealed bags so no uh so no uh staples to worry about here again we have a part fell out here it's our pickaxe or not our pickaxe or um just our, our hatchet or our axe here details very nice something that often um lets us world war ii vehicles down as their tools um Taycom seems to have done the uh put the effort into making the tools look nice then we have x sprue and here we have the large hull sides here again really nice rivet detail these are just big plates of rolled um harmonious steel here so that's all they are there's not much going on so you could add a very very faint rolled steel texture to these if you so wished don't have to it's totally up to you guys we have our as you guys can see we have our hull axis hatches here seems to be some weird pin marks here I'm not entirely sure why so again I'm not entirely sure why we have pin marks here yeah so we're gonna to have to sand those down it's probably just to do with the way, the way that they're molded you can kind of just make them out there below the um, housings for the fusion ports again but all that said again really nice and crisp molding bear in mind these molds are only a few months old the most then we have sprue 13 for some reason so these are numerically marked whereas the rest of the sprues are letters so these are our buggies again kind of reminiscent to asuka models um buggy assemblies again you've seen these a million times before and i'm told these can be a bit fiddly but if you're building a super model one these should not be a problem to you in the slice so on to case brew and case brew we have yes okay so in case brew we have the rear plate for the tank and this should be a cut like a, a cut open slot here and this is where the um access hatches for the engine room is as you can see for tips for some reason Tacom has molded this as a solid blank that is really bizarre. So if you want to model uh, your M3 with an engine compartment and want to have these two access hatches open, you're going to have to cut out this first. That is a really bizarre move. I really don't know why they did that. Uh, it's probably down to the fact that there isn't that many aftermarket sets for M3s out there, as in especially comes to engine sets. I've also just encountered a, a problem, which I'll draw your attention to in a moment. We have our lower hull or our lower turret ring here. Again, we have two Sponson plates here. Again, really nice rivet detail. I hope you guys can make that out. There you go. We have our radiator grill. Again, it's a solid by right. That should be a photo edge, but I suppose you're not going to see too much of that. We have our engine shrouds. We also have like the, the really cute um, 30 cal machine gun turret for the commander. It's really, it's actually tiny. I didn't actually consider just how small these things are. Um, the fission ports are modeled closed, I believe. Or actually, no, you can have, these are just actually the armored, the armored few ports themselves. And then the, the plate goes over that. But we have a bit of damage. This is the 37 mil gun or the 57, I think it's a 37 mil. And it's bent. It is, however, uh, molded hollow, but it is bent. You might try to bend that out of shape. It looks like it got pinched off something. Um, I That's disappointing, but I'm going to probably replace these with aluminium barrels anyway, so it doesn't matter. But still, again, um, that could be just I was unlucky. But it doesn't make much sense why they have the barrel tooled to be on an exposed piece of the sprue where anything can bend it. And that's what probably happened. Uh, another sprue came in and bent it either in packaging or in transit. So I don't understand why Taycom just couldn't move that to be completely covered by the sprue or even put it inside this big void here. That's a bit of a stupid move. But anyway, we live and learn. We have our 30 cal barrels for our coax and for our commander. These are solid. Again, that's a bit disappointing. 
no um, drilled out muscle, um, muscle bores in these. We have our rotor shield here. Again, that might need a bit of a cast texture. We do have a nice cast texturing on the turret roof, or the turret front, should I say, and some nice foundry marking. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Bit overexposed, but hopefully you can make it out. Then we have our two hatches again for the commander's cupola. Big dirty uh, piece of flashing here and no detail on the inner faces and pin marks. So they'll have to be sanded and uh, filled if you want to have your have a commander um, in that cupola. So again, that's a bit of a bizarre sprue. Again, with the solid axis hatch here, which should be a slot cut into that. And with our dodgy 37 or 57 mil gun. Um, I can never remember which caliber that's meant to be. And it's bent, and that's just it's, that's sad. That makes me sad. Lincoln Land tracks again with the solid block type. I'm not gonna take these out of the bags. You can see, you know what these things look like. So we have our lint, and then smaller lint, um, and then our individuals. And we do get a jig to put these together. But again, like I said, from what I've read and from people I've talked to who built these, this is about a link and a half too long. So I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna get around that. But I'll do some more research, and then when I do my build video of this, I'll uh, I'll mention it in that video how I got around it. We have standard Sherman parts again, or just anything. Any of you who've ever built a Sherman, this sprue will be very very familiar to you. So I'm just going to take a look at one of these because they're both the same, and this is Fee for Victory sprue. So we have our individual swing arms for our boogies. Again, very nice. We have the hollow spoked early pattern road wheels. And then we actually have individual little cap pieces for these. I believe that's for our idler. These pieces here, very, very thin plastic. So care must be taken removing them or you'll damage them. We have our hollow spoke idler. Again, very crisp plastic here. Our early sprockets, again, really nice, very crisp again. We have the actual falute fa springs themselves for the suspension. The return rollers that sit on top of it, the early pattern returns. The fuel filler caps look pretty bloody nice. And they actually are quite a bit different to the M4 Sherman's ones. It's quite a nice little detail there. We have one of the counterweights for the 75 gun. Again, some nice details on that. And we get a complete mirror opposite of that, of that sprue, which will give us our running gear. And then the final large bag of parts we come to. So let us have a look if I can get the bloody thing open. So the final bag of parts has been opened and now we're left with D-Sprue. And D-Sprue gives us our turret roof. Again, really nice detail here. Lovely rivet detail. We do have some foundry marks here on the actual cylinder for the gun traverse. I'm not entirely sure if that's meant to be cast piece or not. I'll have to do some research or look at some photographs. Again, we have the hatch again for the crew compartment to get down into the roof, or the roof hatch, should I say. This, I believe, little piece here is the bending template for the brush guards for the headlights. Then we have one of the plates again for the hull. So again, lots of plates for the hull. This might be a bad thing. We'll see what happens when we try to build it. The engine deck itself, again, really, really nice rivets and bolt details here as well as the tie downs are pretty fine we have the gun sight assembly for our 75 mil gun again that's really nicely done we have some spare track pads here if you decorate the hole with if you like we have our uh, front fenders again simple pieces our rear fenders again nothing too crazy some more hole plating Again, really, really nice rivet detail. It looks fabulous. We have, and this is actually kind of cool. We have a stowed tripod for an M1919 uh, 30 caliber mach medium machine gun, including a canvas bag to cover the actual mounting trunnion for the 30 cal to keep like dust off the grease and all that. That's, that's kind of cool. And a nice bit of detail. 
Then we have the parts for our transmission, for the final drives, for the gears. Again, these are nicely cast as well as they do have casting numbers on them. That is really cool. Then we have the uh, elevation rotor for our turret gun, or oh, sorry, for our 75mm gun. And that is our main sprue. And with that, that's all the contents of this kit. And with that, that is my inbox review of Taycom's 135th M3 Lee uh, early production. I really like this kit. There's some small um, weird things here and there, but I will be looking forward to building this.